Colin Robertson is a former Canadian diplomat in Washington and currently vice president and fellow with the Canadian Global Affairs Institute. And Laura Dawson is director of the Canada Institute at the Wilson Center in Washington and is a former senior advisor on economic affairs at the U.S. Embassy here in Ottawa. Good to see you both. Uh, thanks for being with me to talk about the, uh, the summit. Uh, Laura Dawson, let me start with you. The, the summit is occurring in the wake of the Brexit referendum. What message do you think the three North American leaders need to send about free trade in, in light of what happened in uh, Europe? Well, I think the, the opportunity in the wake of what happened in Europe is a message about stability that uh, North America is a trade ar arrangement that actually works and nobody's going anywhere and it's helped to create prosperity and it's helped to generate uh, uh, a cross-border business and uh, we've seen how much uh, uh, the decision in Britain has really shaken global markets so I, I think the uh, the message here is that North America is here to stay North America is solid it's not going anywhere Colin Robertson, there's a, there's a poll out today in, in this country that says only 25% of Canadians think NAFTA has been good for Canada. More than a third want the deal renegotiated. And of course, there is a, a sense of increasing, a, a tone of increasing protectionism in the United States. How do the North American leaders counter that? Well, I think we have to get back to telling people why NAFTA works for them and why North American trade works for them. We, we really, uh, for, over the last 10 years, we We've negotiated a whole series of trade agreements which will benefit Canada with Europe and we hope uh, a, a, an enhanced deal within North America through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But what we failed to do is point out to people that trade puts bread on the table. There's been a sense that it's simply the investor class that wins from these trade deals. In fact, the, the economy does benefit, but we've got to remind people of that and how it affects their daily lives. There's a whole lot of Canadians who are exporting things to the United States, but they don't appreciate that what they do, what they make is being sent abroad and that it puts, uh, I'd say, dollars in their pocket and bread on the table. Could you have a Brexit in North America, do you think? Uh, no, I don't think so, because we've not got anywhere near the deep, heavy bureau bureaucratic overlay or the, the, the legal framework that the Europeans have imposed upon themselves. We do integration light. Uh, it's, it's economic partnership rather than deep economic integration. I think there is a difference. I think the North American model works. I do think we can make improvements to it, and that's what I'm hoping will come out of this week's summit. Uh, Laura, uh, can I, can yeah, I jump sure. in, sorry, on, on the public opinion? Uh, I, I think a lot of it comes with the way that uh, the question is framed. NAFTA has become synonymous with everything that's wrong with globalization. Uh, but if you ask people, are you in favor of selling more of your products to other markets and, and exporting more? Most people would say yes. So I think we have to overcome the sort of branding problem that uh, NAFTA has become associated with. Okay, uh, let's talk a bit about, I mean, if, to listen to Donald Trump, and, and uh, I'm not sure how much Donald Trump's name will come up at the Three Amigos Summit It will come up. It will come up, <laughs> I suspect. But to listen to Donald Trump trades bad. Uh, Hillary Clinton is hardly sounding like a trade champion these days. Uh, Laura, still with you, could, could the free trade deal, the uh, deals that Canada's worked so hard to get over the past 30 years, could they really be in jeopardy? I, I think a lot of it is campaign rhetoric. I mean, Donald Trump, for whatever else he is, is a pro-business candidate. And I don't really understand how you can be pro-business and anti-trade. Uh, so I don't think we get rid of the NAFTA. Uh, a candidate Trump is talking about potentially renegotiating the NAFTA. Those of us who work inside the nitty-gritty of trade details understand that this is incredibly difficult to reopen uh, the NAFTA to change the fundamental basics. However, you can steer trade agreements in particular directions. You can have the agreements evolve to reflect uh, changing public demands, changing technology changing economy uh, and so you could make it a more socially inclusive uh, agreement for the 21st century. Uh, Colin, uh, you, you jumped in to say Trump's yeah. name comes up. Uh, how does it come up? Well it comes up from Pena Nieto asking the advice of President Obama you know, what's, what's going to happen? This Here's got a candidate talking about building a wall with Mexico. The Mexicans, if we're concerned about the, the rising protections in the United States, the Mexicans are really concerned because they've had uh, they've the direct target, certainly, of, of Donald Trump. Uh, but well, that underlines something that we have to do. We should be working more closely with Mexico. We worked closely together to fend off beef protectionism. It took us a decade to do it on this country, country of origin, origin labeling. labeling yeah. But we, we did it successfully with Mexico. Uh, at a starter, I would have our two ambassadors sit down, exchange playbooks. What we need, this takes you back to what Laura's point and your question about the poll, we need our consuls general, our ambassadors in the United States on both sides making the case of why trade in North America works for Americans. Most Americans have no appreciation that 40% of what they 
uh, import from Mexico start off in the United States in the first place. For Canada, it's 25 percent. We make things together now in North America, but most Americans, frankly, most Canadians and Mexicans do not have that appreciation. That's what I'm hoping that the, uh, the trade consultations that are taking place in Canada to specifically address the poll will help do, that we'll, we'll re-educate Canadians as to why trade matters. You know, there was a time not long after we did the free trade agreement in the early 90s when support for trade was up at 75 percent, and Canadians have given their governments a license to negotiate trade because they saw trade working for them, but they have to be reminded of why trade matters. Uh, Laura, what, what, what's, what's the objective for Justin Trudeau in, in, in this, uh, this summit? Uh, we, clearly he and Barack Obama get along uh, just great, but Barack Obama's only there for another few months and then he's gone. So what does Canada need before he goes? Uh, well, it's a big challenge because uh, uh, Justin Trudeau was very successful in his last visit uh, in rebranding Canada for Americans and establishing a really strong personal relationship with Barack Obama. But as you say, with Obama out the door, there's very little that they can do that requires big political attention, uh, big political movements. So um, I, I think that Trudeau has been so far successful in rebranding the relationship that has reset the tone with uh, various government departments, senior officials, decision makers. Uh, and so I think he needs to consolidate that he is more than just a pretty face. He is also someone with really good proposals, uh, that Canada is open for business, that Canada is a strong partner, that Canada has got new ideas in all of the areas that are important to us, which are climate change, mm -hmm. energy, uh, trade competitiveness, uh, uh, social inclusion, inclusion of youth. Um, all of these things are, are uh, really important initiatives that Justin Trudeau can be bringing to the table at this uh, at this summit. Colin, what's your view? Yeah, I think that his first objective in these next few days, first reset the relationship with Mexico. That visa has acted as a drag on the relationship for almost a decade now. Reset the, that relationship, lift the visa. We'll start seeing, I think, more Mexicans coming as tourists, as investors, and as students. We need to do that, and then we need to get down and, there. And how important is that if, if, if we're facing a, 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 an increasing level, perhaps, of protectionism in the United States? How important is it for Canada to to look at broadening the relationship with Mexico well, if, there, Mex if there's going to be some bumps with the United States. Yeah, I mean, remember, when it, as American protectionism, it may not be aimed at Canada and Mexico, but we become collateral damage because our, our economies are so integrated. So by working together, as we did uh, on beef, as we can do on trucking and there are other issues, I think we can help fend some of this off. But I'd also say, uh, picking up what Laura said, I think consolidate the relationship with President Obama. I think there are things the president can do in the coming months. Use of executive orders, giving a nudge. Softwood lumber, for example, we don't well, want it to pull next, back on yeah. things. Uh, on border access, there are things the president can do to move things forward. And then, of course, the three leaders have to demonstrate to their publics in the wake of Brexit that the, ours is a different kind of model. Our sovereignties, in fact, are reinforced by our economic partnership. Uh, Laura, can I? Yep, go ahead. Oh, I just want to jump in on the importance of Mexico. Uh, Colin's done a really good job of outlining it, but it is very, very important to, to Canada because of the, the demographic differences. Canada is an aging population. Uh, Canada needs younger markets, younger workers, and Mexico is the ideal partner uh, for Canada. I think it's too often looked at as a competitor when, in fact, it's more of a complementary economy. Uh, with the U.S. and Mexico, Canada has more successful integrated supply chains. So Canadians really need to take another look at that relationship and also to consider doing the sort of technical assistance and investment in Mexico that will help them implement their commitments, that will help them follow the rules better, implement the things that they want to do within the North American relationship. Uh, can, Canada may actually have to invest in Mexico to make that happen. Okay, uh, quickly, can I get you to follow up on software lumber, Colin? So, uh, this is shaping up now in the absence of a deal as another nasty uh, yeah. fight that could go on for a long time. We're, we're what, moving, what, 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 can, they, can they get around that at all at, at this summit? Can they move forward on that? Well, I think we'll, this is one where I think the president really has to, to act. I think he could do his friend Justin Trudeau a favor. He could uh, turn to industry, because remember this industry, is a lot of it's consolidated on both sides of the border, only things, and say, figure this thing out talk to Congress. This is what George W. Bush did the last time around. He really banged heads and brought things together. Otherwise, I think, and I would I'd also, I would not just leave it to the United States Trade Representative's Office. It's probably right. the most anti-Canadian agency within the American government. I don't see progress there. Uh, I fear we're headed down a road of, of litigation and confiscation 
confiscatory levies on lumber, and it'll be a while before we settle this out. And I'm, it, it, as we've seen in the past, these things really do affect the relationship, even though, uh, in relative terms, lumber is a small piece of the much bigger pie of the daily transactions. Laura, let me finish with you. Uh, software going to be a problem again? Yeah, uh, soft was going to be a problem. I don't really see it coming up too much in these uh, in the trilateral su uh, summit because it's a bilateral issue. Right. Um, unless, as Colin says, uh, Barack Obama gives Canada a real gift on the way out the door, it's going to be a prolonged and painful fight. All right, Laura Dawson, and <laughs> Laura Dawson in Washington, Colin Robertson here. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thanks.